Hey everyone, this video is going to be covering how to set up cartoony eyeballs that look pretty convincing and don't involve um, actually rotating the eye at all, but rather being clever and rotate or moving the pupil on top of the surface of the eye instead of having it modeled in. And the reason you might want to do this is because if you have a character such as this uh, character right here that I made, um, then the eyes might not be a perfect sphere and therefore they can't rotate around their center like a regular sphere would be able to without looking incredibly weird. Um, imagine having an egg in your eye socket and then what would happen if you tried to rotate it around, that around like it's your eyeball. So, um, this is going to be pretty easy to set up, actually, and I'm not going to cover every single part of this rig, because um, I just want to have everybody understand the overall concepts. Um, technically, I did the same thing for the eyebrows, too, or sorry, eyelids. Um, so these are actually just a mesh that is kind of going up and down on top of the surface of the the eye, as we can see here, it's, this one's not quite perfect yet. Um, the other one, they get a little weird at the top, but um, what can you do? So um, let's jump into a new scene, and we can see how this works from scratch. So I'll create, uh, I'll create a sphere, but I'll make it, um, actually instead of a sphere I might make a quad ball, and um, the quad ball I'll kind of stretch out a little like this so that we have a non-traditional shape. Uh, I might even grab the top and bottom faces and kind of scale them in a little bit. Oh, that's not going to work um, because we need more geometry. but. Um, if I smooth this, you know, we might have an eye that's shaped something like this, and I do want to have a little bit more geometry. Obviously, how much geometry you can afford to have depends on your project, but I don't care for now, so I'm just going to make it pretty dense. Um, so there's my eyeball, my temporary eyeball anyway, um, and I'm going to make myself also a pupil and for this I might use the new disk primitive um, this didn't exist before when I created this rig originally the rig we were just looking at um, Megan I believe was her character's name um, but essentially I'm going to kind of get this lined up so it looks like it could be slapped onto the front of the face there and I might make a few tweaks. I might give this one more level of subdivisions as well. I actually am not super familiar with the disk primitive yet because like well, how it looks when it deforms and everything just because, as I said before, um, I haven't actually used it that much because it's new. But I might as well name these things. So this is eyeball and this is pupil. That's, that's all we'll name them for now. And just to make this a little bit more apparent, we'll also give this a white blend sh a shader. And this one we could actually give perhaps a just pure black surface shader so that it doesn't have any reflections on it. So um, there's not too many part uh, steps for this, but step one will be that we'll grab the eyeball, grab the pupil, and we're going to create a geometry constraint and this doesn't have any attributes you need to worry about so we'll add that and what that will do is look at the objects pivot point and say okay that pivot point is going to be stuck directly to the surface of its parent object forever um, so it's not going to rotate or anything like that but it'll be locked and I can't pull this off of the surface even if I wanted to. 
So um, that's the first step is the geometry constraint. And I'll make sure this is set to zero. That's why I said uh, froze my transforms. Oh, actually, you know what? This may have. I may just temporarily delete that and see. Because I did notice it moved a little bit when I applied it, but it didn't really. Um, I didn't think it would matter too much, but now this is acting like it. It's making a big fuss out of it, so I might freeze those transforms again and try the geometry constraint. So yeah, now we're good. Um, it's a little thing like that that will get you in the end if you're not paying attention. So I'm going to do the same thing again, but instead I'm going to select a normal constraint, and this time we do need to actually look at the settings because they will be relevant. Um, so we want to make sure the aim vector is pointing in the right direction. Currently this is would be in positive Z. So because Autodesk refuses to actually label these, I just have to know that it's X, Y, and Z always. I don't know why that's so hard to just make it be a, maybe a click box like they have in other uh, tools where you just select the axis and select positive or negative. But um, we can add that. And this actually, the geometry is constraint doesn't really show up on the object, but the normal constraint, we can see much like an orient constraint or an aim constraint, we get the rotations locked. And now my uh, pupil will be pointing towards the object it's parented to, as well as staying on the surface of it. And now the finishing touch of this is that we need to deform the pupil so that it stays wrapped around the surface of our eyeball. Otherwise, it's going to be doing weird clipping and also will noticeably be flat the entire time, which obviously was dumb. So let's um, once again select the eye and then the pupil, except this time instead of a constraint, we are going to find the shrink wrap deformer. And this is another relatively new thing. It's not, um, it's been around for a few versions of Maya, but I'm just going to use the default um, settings for now. Oh, you know what? Did I? I may, yeah, I think I selected those in the wrong order. The This one, um, you actually need to select the deformee first, and then the object that it'll be shrink wrapping around. So I just undid that a few. There we go. So now, ugh, that looks ugly, but um, technically my pupil is shrink wrapping onto the surface as well as the normal and the geometry constraint going into effect. So what we can do here is just find my shrink wrap deformer. Probably going to smooth this a bit, and now it will smooth so much that it went inside. We can use the offset to fix that. We don't want this to be hovering too much on the surface, but we can find a happy in-between for this. Oh, that's not a happy in-between. That's more of a happy in-between. And that's probably good. And technically, now that's like the, all the steps that you'll need to do. Um, some of this is, oh, that's because the eyeball is not smooth either. Um, so now you're really going to already have this working. And the only things you'll have to watch out for are um, you don't want, you're never going to want to pull this off the surface. So only um, kind of up and sideways, not forward ever. And you also don't want to rotate this because you won't really be able to anyway because of the normal constraint. So as soon as this moves, it'll go back. But um, you definitely don't want to do that either. So you don't like to go back to zero, do you, buddy boy? Um, now, obviously, you don't want to have to be dealing with all that while you're animating. So you would want to make a controller for this. And... What we're going to do, since we know that we're just moving this around, is um, I'll create a 
controller for this. Oh, that's the wrong button. Um, I look uh, or whatever, and I might uh, group that so I can move the group out front and use my control vertices to make that look like that. And if I grab the eye controller and I grab the pupil, then I can point constrain the um, translation, sorry. <laughs> and um, I'm just gonna add that. I might even um, do a few other touches here, but really now this is going to work perfectly fine. And we can set this back to zero without any fear of having weird values um, like we were just seeing before when we tried to set the actual mesh back to zero. Hello. Um, and what I might do is um, free lock the translate Z on this because we're never going to use that. Never going to rotate this or scale it either. So now we know that the only thing we're ever going to do with this is side to side, up and down, combinations of those, and we'll only need to key those attributes when we're animating. Um, so yeah, the rest uh, the rest of this would be kind of cleanup of where to put these things in the hierarchy and all that jazz, um, but I'm not really going to cover those right now. I just wanted to make a video about how to set this up. Um, I might make a more complete video of this later, but for now, um, I'm just going to cover these things, he said, as an excuse, because he just had to go back and look up how to do those things. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll have to go back to my old, uh, my other rig that I just had open and um, double check how to actually put these into the scene. The eyeball can just be skinned. The pupil um, can really just be uh, probably like parented directly under the eyeball. And that should do the trick, but um, this should be enough to get you started for now. All right, that's all I'm going to do for this video. See you later.